Men are not emotional cheaters. Nah, not at all. Men often cheat for convenience, proximity, you understand me? Uh, and then the idea that men don't believe that they're cheating at the same time because men never truly context that it's cheating because men believe that it's a part of their nature to be out in conquest and conquer. You understand me? And to explore. It's a part of your freedom. It's part of your natural rights as a man to be able to do what you want to. That's how you feel as a man. So a lot of men feel like it's cheating to be monogamous rather than it's cheating to just be, right? right? Because it's like, cheating is like really going against the rules that you set for yourself. Welcome to the Man of Man podcast. We're going to talk like God. Man of Man. That's where you at. Another thing, I was, um, oh, social media, man. What's been going on social media that um, stood out to you this week? That was that you felt like was some masculine, you know, or there ain't nothing popping to your head right now. It could be something in the past. It don't necessarily have to be this this past week either. I mean, you know what was dope? Of course, my bro. Uh, I think we talked about it last time. No, I ain't gonna bring that one. Um, yeah, some masculine. Negro don't be doing too much masculine stuff these days. Yeah, I did like the fact that Moneybag Yo put out the statement that, that he, he was going clean and he put that out there yeah. rather than did it privately and continue to rap about the same shit. Um, I seen that Jay-Z and Meek Mills had a uh, coalition where they trying to stop yeah. lyrics from being incriminated, you understand yeah. me, and should be more so just considered entertainment rather than a source that the DA can use to prosecute more black men and women, right? Now, I want to expand on that, actually, because even with them doing that, right, uh, with all these young rappers and these new kids, bro, they real life talk about their crimes and their music, though, mm -hmm. you know? Like, so it's like kind of like... Well, yeah, because pull they and take, feel give like... and take, you know? They feel like if I talk about... It, you understand me? And I'll be polarizing, I can go viral. You talking about like a lot of these kids that ain't got no opportunities whatsoever, yeah. or they got no opportunities. They ain't got no First guidance. Of all, they ain't got no guidance. Cause the yeah. oppor that's, that's one thing I want to say. Yeah, false narrative that there's no opportunities, right? Yeah. That's, a, that's a complete false narrative. The guidance and the mentality is what's missing, right? Yeah. Because it's a 14-year-old girl, girl somewhere making NFTs, making millions of dollars, yeah. right? But there's a grown man somewhere complaining that there's no opportunities, right? There's a little kid on YouTube that made, I forgot how many millions, and another person on TikTok that made millions. Yeah. Then there's another grown man complaining somewhere that there's no opportunities. You understand me? Um, there, there, there's way too many opportunities for you not to be taking them. Yeah. But the key of all of that is education. Like, ignorance is the reason that these things occur, right? And then at the same time, the wrong models, you understand me, that people want to roll themselves after, and, or, 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 or the wrong roles that people want to model themselves after, right? And so, but in the hood, though, when a, when a cat think about aspirations, they think, how can I get what bruh got, you understand me, quickly, though. Like, yeah, they ain't quick. about the process. They want it quick. So they will say, listen, man, if I become a rapper, right, because everybody go to the default of rap. And ain't nothing wrong with rap. You understand me? Like, I rap. You understand? I freestyle, whatever. But at the end of the day, that ain't creative. That ain't even utilizing a tenth of... Uh, uh, all of the brain power and potential that you have. Go look at your favorite rappers and look at what happened when they branch off and they get money and they understand the real game. Yeah. They're not, they not trying to double down like, on rap. They want to double down on investment. And then you got, when, 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 when they switch over and they start investing, it, people say, man, they switched up, they crossed over. Then, nah, they just learned the game. They've been yeah. in the industry long enough now to see the behind the scenes of how it's ran. They want to get their money that way now, you know? Well, yeah, because if you go look at I mean, if you go look at uh, 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 the NFL, right, 96% of uh, damn NFL is black, but 1% of the owners are black. Yeah. You understand me? Which is terrible numbers. You go look at hip hop, 99% of the artists are black, but how many record labels are black from top to bottom? Yeah. You understand me? From top to bottom, there's none, 100%, right? right? Not large ones. Um, 
So it's like, at the end of the day, we don't own and control none of that energy. And then they sign terrible deals that everybody know about, don't get paid off none of their music, you understand mm -hmm. me? And then they go out there and got to hustle and run and do hella stuff. And then they want to learn the real game. Because the only reason that the white boys or Jewish corporations ever had anything above them is because they understand the game. You understand mm -hmm. me? And that you are a product for me to sell. So when they learn the game, they learn how to sell themselves. They learn how to set up deals for themselves. They learn how to invest for themselves. They learn the understanding that, yo, this was a means to an end. I started rapping, you understand me, for the real business to happen once I learned how to move my money and, and, and manage my own investments and understand the game for what it's worth. Now, one thing I do want to caution them because, it's, you know, we got a real boys society when it comes to the rap game. Mm -hmm. A lot of the, of the rappers, athletes as well, don't know anything about business, anything about investments, anything about real opportunities and things of that nature. Man, they couldn't educate their child on nothing. Mm -hmm. You understand me? Because for the most part, they got somebody doing everything for them. Right? They got mm -hmm. a team. They got people who manage their money. So for them, a lot of times it looks like they're making great decisions. That's somebody else yeah. making all decisions for them. So basically, they... Whole life is being controlled. Whole life is being controlled. They're still in the matrix. So, so when you want them to teach the culture, they can't because they don't have that expertise. They don't mm. have the knowledge to do it. And then those who do still don't do it. And, and you get a couple of people that, that, like Money Man, I like the fact that he be moving his audience towards blockchain and crypto yeah. and NFTs, right? He, 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 did, people he, like he damn Dolph. good with the marketing for that, yeah. for, his, for his music, for yeah. sure. You had Young Dolph that was teaching people about independent and, and really setting them on a course of game. Nip, Nipsey Hussle. Nipsey Hussle, man, yeah. was the, probably the most prolific example <laughs> that we had. Your man, you understand Pac. Me? Pac had that record label before Suge Knight had a record label. Yeah. You understand me? Uh, uh, um, and so, you know, Jay-Z sets a great example that makes people aspire to want to be more. Kanye sets an example that makes people aspire to want to be more just simply from seeing where they was and where they are. Yeah. And then, of course, Kanye now is being more vocal with his whole platform. But nobody still is saying that I'm going to be the one that uses my platform to really teach the culture. Yeah. Right? Now, they don't have to. It ain't their job. That's my job. That's the job of the people who actually understand it and know it. Dangerous thing is when they want the credit as if they're teachers, but they don't know what the fuck they're talking about. Yeah. Instead, it'd be better to collaborate with the actual leaders and educators in those areas. And then, you understand me, you get the benefit of bringing them to the culture. Yeah. And so, one of the issues that I see more so is the fact that, you know, the young leaders are not celebrated, appreciated, you understand me, and propagated by those who have large platforms that could help them have exponential growth to reach even more people. Right. You understand me? And that's probably one of the, the, the biggest issues, but at the same time it's like, so what? Like I don't I don't look I don't even sometimes like, like for them to call me no more because the, it just be man, weird. We turn no vision on the mission, man. You know Yeah, it's like at the tough. end of the day, you know, either you you, you, you helping or you hurting. You feel me? That's the way I look at it. Like if you see my platform and you see me working for all these years and you don't reach out to provide any aid or assistance consider you the enemy at the end of the day. You understand me? Like, that's what yeah. it's about because there's no way that I can just watch a person work and not help. You know, and you know what they say, man, if you, if you ain't at the table with us, we putting you on the menu. <laughs> nah, that's a super talk, fact, man. Yeah. Everybody got to, you know, time always comes around. You understand me? A lot of things expire. A lot of people die out and rightfully so. You had your platform. You had your time. You yeah. understand me? And that influence is going to be killed. Because it's going to be a time where essential value reigns so necessary, especially in times like we in a market decline. People don't know what the hell going on. They need to be educated. They need yeah. to understand. And even people that want to step in that position to help, they don't know how to research and investigate. They don't even know how to go find the information and then put it together and present it on a platform because they're going to feel weird because everything else they do is ignorant. Yeah. So it's like you put yourself in such a position that you distract people all the time and then when you do want to do good you understand me the people feel like they don't want it from you because that ain't what they came here for yeah i think people spend more of their time trying to impress people instead of impact people you know that's in a, a positive fact. manner man, that's you a know? bar you yeah. understand me I always say integrity over celebrity man 
You understand yeah, me? Yeah, for sure, for sure. Uh, but yeah, man, you know, that's that's the game. You understand me? The rap game is always an interesting one. It's always changing, but it's so impactful to the culture that you can't ignore it. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So, like, it has to be consistently molded, reshaped, and, and, and yeah. re-understood. Man, I ain't in, gonna lie. correct manner. When I was growing up and I used to be... I was a music connoisseur. Like, I used to be waiting on the new music to drop. I'm on it. I'm on top of it. But it has changed up so much. And it's been... I, I don't I don't even care who dropping the new album, man. For real. Yeah, <laughs> I all. mean, because you know, it ain't that much to digest it ain't, from it. It ain't... It ain't. Number one, you got to think of it like this. Music ain't consumed the same way anymore. But yeah. even if it was, would you want to overly consume this music too much? Everybody got the same vibe. Everybody got the same producer. Everybody got the same video and the same. Yeah. And it's, it's the just same. Ain't, it ain't shit out. That's that that that's. It ain't nothing that's standing out. That's switching up the Agler rhythm. Yeah, bro. It ain't switching. And nothing. it ain't. It ain't got shit to do with the the frequency I'm on. Yeah. Like the thing about Nipsey Hussle is like the music was almost. It was like a soundtrack for entrepreneurship. It was a soundtrack for getting out one place and going to another. It was a soundtrack of ambition and motivation and inspiration. Like, like I seen... You ain't supposed to be sitting down watch, listening to Nipsey. You supposed to be executing, you know what I mean, listening to Nipsey and relating to the, the same stories way with Rick Ross. Told. Rick yeah. Ross just put you in that boss mode, make yeah. you want to just, you know, let me go open me a seven-figure business nah, right that's quick. A fact. You know, that's a Jeezy fact. tried to do it, but Jeezy came in on such a street trapper rapper then when he tried to, you know, pull out his CDs now talking about yeah. it, the transition it don't resonate well. with the people. It ain't, you know, it don't resonate with the people, but he was straight trying to drop y'all some game. Well, I just feel like the transition <clears throat> didn't, it, 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 it wasn't smooth. Yeah. It got to be gradual. You got to take a person with that journey. But yeah. if you just change the music from here to here, in. hide the code, you lose the people. Yeah. You understand me? So I think that it, it, it has to mature, right? And then people going with that journey with you, and then they rocking with you like, oh, okay, you know, I was with you here, and I seen how you done grow, and yeah. now I'm ready to listen to these new things you're going through. You feel me? Mm -hmm. But that's an art, though. You feel me? Of, yeah. of transitioning and evolving yeah. your music. Being legendary in the in the music game is definitely an art, man. You got to like, really? but the people who legendary, if you can obviously see that they paid attention to the roadmap when they was traveling on their road. You know, they was. They was paying attention. They was making them relationships and, and making them impressions and packing people. Right. You know. So what about the push of P? Right. Yeah. So it's like, you know, I'm from Oakland, so that to me ain't nothing new, right? Yeah. You understand me? We we been keeping it P. We been keeping it play, right? But at the end of the day, <laughs> right? <laughs> they ain't, they ain't no man. Yeah, that's it. Right. <laughs> right. You feel me? Um, no, but for real though, it's like. Uh, there's a movement that's happening in the hip hop that's trying to transition like that drill, kill, murder, violence. You understand me? Um, rap, from what I've seen, into like a union more. It's like trying to bring back this player's ball atmosphere where things are more about, you know, keeping it player and looking out for each other, right? Rather than snaking yeah. each other and trying to snatch each other women <clears> or like <throat> doing bogus things. And it's trying to transition to where everybody keeping it peak. You see, understand I me? see the whole opposite of that. I see alliance when I look at the rap game. If you ain't tied in with these certain people, or if I see you doing it with them, that's then... The, that's what I mean by the union, So, it, that ain't player to me. If y'all gonna keep it player, then y'all well, should be real and just let them know, so, like, we causing destruction to our community by going against each other. Now, you know? listen, though, because... You, so the idea of the gatekeeper is, is basically saying that there's a group of people who keep other people from coming in unless they decide that you can come in. You understand me? Yeah. Because they, while you're trying to get started, they're already in a position of power, right? And so anybody that's connected or in agreement to this position of power is like a society, a secret society. You understand me? Like only the members of, of that that agree to these rules can be let in, right? So the question becomes is do hip hop need that, right? If, if if older generations that did have a, let's say, a, a more thought-provoking movement, you understand me, that uh, laid down the principles that our culture needed to grow, created a union that stopped others from coming into the culture, 
right, that was uh, derogatory in a sense and, 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 and that did bring in the negative and the evils and the arrogance, you understand me, then they would have preserved that aspect of the culture more. I think these young boys tired of dying. I think they yeah. they tired of having the expectation that they need to go uh, um, get revenge for their homie when they know that that's certain death or yeah. locked in prison and, and, and you done with it all with no possibility of taking care of your family. I think that they really starting to get that fact. And also, we live in an over-surveillance reality. It's impossible to get away Everything with things. <laughs> so it's like, at the end of the day, it's a necessity. And then, of course, the, the idea of what you said, though, is like, yeah, that may be one group that does that, Union Alliance. The other group that are different and indifferent from them, they have to find and create their own alliance. Because at the yeah. end of the day, we live in a time where ain't nobody really can be a gatekeeper. You understand me? Not if you unify strong enough with a group of people that can challenge the current systems. And right. if they unity and unifying and organization is stronger than the rest, they can win. Or at least create a new competition on the block. Right? Like, ain't nobody got a monopoly over the culture. Unless people trying to all exist within the same field, then, of course, that's when it's shrunken because we still got that crap in the bucket mentality. And the reason that I like to push the idea of what's positive about the movement is because I want to see them produce more of that light. Right. You understand me? It's like the, the narrative got to be taken strong to where, like, imagine if that wasn't the narrative at all. Right, like keeping it player in, in, in real life and they want to transition from the negative. But imagine if that's what the culture assumed the narrative was, which makes it the new narrative. Yeah. Because now they want to live up to the standards and the ideas and what's making the culture react, react to them. You understand me? So we got this power of impressioning the artist, impressioning the world, and forcing the narrative to become the one that we want to actually see in reality, which is what I focus on. You understand me? Because I believe those who push anything positive for our people deserve, you understand me, um, profit. You understand me? I was pushing peas. Yeah, right you just though. pushing peas. <laughs> keys pushing peas. Really. <laughs> <laughs> man, I think, man, I will, for real, I'm going to just be real honest, man. I think what, what the world is missing right now, and especially America, they missing that Donald Trump energy, man. They need they need that masculine energy back. Not him per se, but the energy, man. That dominant energy that's gone with they move and they force. They gonna say how they feel and they going along with the move, that's man. Feel, man. Cause like I don't when I politics since since what's his name? What's what's the president's name? Uh, Sleepy Joe. Sleepy Joe. I don't even know his name. It's been real quiet. Sleepy Joe. It's been quiet. Was asked by the damn news reporter. <laughs> <laughs> they said, look, man, the people that did a poll and asked, do they think that you mentally fit? He like, man, 57% of the people said that they had no confidence in your mental f uh, faculties. So he said, listen, and Joe Biden was about to say something like, hey, hey, and he said, well, hey, man, let me, let me get this out first. <laughs> yeah. He said, so well, even the Democrats couldn't answer confidently and favorable <laughs> to your mental acuity. You understand me? Your mental state of well-being. He said, sleepy Joe. Why do you think that is that people don't have confidence in your mental fitness? This man, Sleepy Joe, said, I don't know. <laughs> That's what I'm saying, man. Like, man, listen, man. <clears throat> I told you so. I'm not a person that want to be out here yelling, I told you so. But it's like, come on, man. How long are you going to not listen to the gods? You understand yeah. me? And then be surprised at what happened because of these devils. Like, at the end of the day, you get what you deserve. You understand me? That's it. That's all. You feel me? Like, people will get mad. Keys, you can't do that. If you don't vote, you can't talk about, oh, they should vote for you. How you going to take care of the people? I told you, look, I'm going to do more this for, for you than Sleepy Joe ever could. Yeah. I, 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 I Look, I put a campaign side by side. I say, look, you can rock with the young gods or you can go with the old devils. You understand me? Yeah. I promise you that I will do more for you in the next four years than Sleepy Joe ever could. And I... Delivered on my campaign promises. Yeah. I promise to make America a better place. <laughs> <laughs> I promise to make black America a safer place. Man, I don't More either. educated and liberated than ever. And today, I have delivered in this year. It's, it's crazy. Like, the Joe. only thing I seen Sleepy Joe talk about was COVID. The whole time ain't been nah, enough. man, ain't talking about nothing. <laughs> that man, man, that shit is terrible, B, for yeah. real. Though, like, in real life, man, the, the honorable Miss Louis Farrakhan said Donald Trump would be the last president. This man is not a president. 
Yeah. This new man is not a president at all. You understand me? Like, what one presidential act have you seen this man do? Yeah. Like, like nothing. It, as far as our community you know, goes, like we got a president. As far as like the black community to go, we've been like really stirred away. We we've been lost faith in the politics and you know what I'm saying in the system, the government system. Period. But like. Joe and them is like real life stamping it like man we don't even like it's them. dead like it's, it's dead. over it's over here <laughs> like they like you might as well just aut automate it you know what I'm saying like yeah. what he does anybody could do like yeah. no like just think about that for, you know for a second we should make a metaverse president yeah like Create that's what we need you know what I'm saying president. just have a little AI because I like <laughs> no really think about this for a second who can't do what Joe Biden does who. Like for me, that's yeah. like McDonald's. No disrespect to McDonald's work, but that's like McDonald's level work type of uh, activities I see him do. Yeah. And he ain't got to be charismatic. Don't have to be a good speaker. Don't have to make great decisions. Don't actually have to execute. And on he got the same he says. suit. None of those things. <laughs> he like I don't really? know what job in America. You understand me? Now, if you qualify like, yo, okay, there's the president. At first, you would think like, man, being a president got to be stressful. Yeah. You got all these decisions to make. You got to do this, that, and the third. You got to be like on top of your field at all times, right? But when you got somebody up there like Sleepy Joe, you feel like literally anybody can do his job. Yeah. I can't think of a person who couldn't be president now that Sleepy Joe is president. And you thought it was bad when Donald Trump was there. They was like, well, they letting anybody do it because he a sitcom dude. But yeah. now it was like, Sleepy Joe couldn't run a sitcom. Sleepy Joe can't do nothing. <laughs> but sleep. I'm sure he takes a nap after every single time yeah. he comes outside. Like, he immediately, they, they, he, they, they probably set up the White House like a nursing home. You understand me? <laughs> he probably got apple, applesauce waiting for him and everything. Yeah, he, he definitely got a walk. He got a little quick rub waiting for him, man. That man go to sleep. Yeah. Man, this shit is terrible, B. It's like... And reality is like we really still waiting. Just the idea that we still vote for old as hell white man to make new change. Yeah. Like, come on, man. Come on, Boosie. Come on, man. Come on, man. Say, come on. Hey, man. Say, who man is don't this? Make no sense. You feel <laughs> but me? Yo, like, be, like it, it, I can't see how a grown man and woman was. Remember when I remember when he first came, I got in, right? Yeah. Looked on the shade room. All the black women and women talking about some ooh joke and get it. First day week in office, black men over here looking side eye like <laughs> <laughs> mad as hell. Like what's going on for real? People celebrating, putting out this picture. Listen, the beauty about social media is all a record. We got transactions of everybody that was capping for Sleepy Joe, the white captain. I mean, they was they thought they won the lottery. You understand me? Now, some people are like, well, nah, we weren't doing it like that. We were just saying we're going to be able to negotiate. He the worst of the evils. I told you. Yeah. You understand me? My analogy was this. You got two wolves, right? You got one wolf that he just walks up and say, listen, I'm Mr. Wolf. I'm here to bite. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is my nature. I'm eating. I'm Trump. hunting. You understand me? That's Trump. And that's then, and that's then, when I say about Mr. Masculine Energy, because but, but then you got on with his Mr. Move. Wolf in Sheep's Clothing. You understand me? Where the people are like, you know what? We think he we know he a wolf, but at least he not telling us up front his intentions. Yeah. And they say, well, I'm a vote for the Wolf in Sheep's Clothing rather than the Wolf it's in self. Wolf Clothing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like Donald Trump was an upfront asshole. You yeah, understand definitely me? Would. Joe Biden is a is a backdoor asshole. No homos. You understand me? <laughs> but I'm just saying, pause. <laughs> but that's society, you feel me? So it's like same thing Kamala Harris, man. Every black woman went and voted for her, all the women, yeah. all that other extra crap. That woman ain't made a good statement yet. The one time she went viral, you understand me, is because Charlemagne essentially made her donkey of the day. Yeah. So it's like we we, we in a terrible. Situation. I was having a talk with somebody the other day, and my thing is with politics, where black people get into politics, and they actually like get into a position where they able to make a change. 
Man, they just jump right in and fire with the program, man. They don't go on that change yeah. shit. And then you got Kamala Harris. She's with a white man. So it's like, you gonna take all of those black women. You got the mayor in Chicago. She's with a, 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 a white woman, I believe. You understand me? Um, you know, you gonna take these strong political women figures that are celebrated in America, right? And I believe Ohan had like two black husbands before she got with the white man, but that political career though, you understand me? Can a black woman truly be for her people if she's not with a black man? That's the question. And it's the same thing vice versa, but we're specifically talking about women at this point in case. Because I don't, I don't look towards no black man in politics like he go do yeah. so. He he yeah. automatically get that title. <laughs> He already disqualified you know what I'm before he yeah. gets in the front like door. A lot of the black women are seen as revolutionary, yeah. right? But at the end of the day, if they love black people so much, how come they not with black people? You know what I'm saying? Like, if they really love the culture so much and they for so much, how come they not with us? You cannot yeah. be with the culture and not with the culture. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, so it's like when you go at home and you with your spouse and y'all having relationship conversations that will influence the political uh, 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 um, uh, 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 decisions that you make, is that coming from a place, uh, uh, from a cultural environment, or it's coming from a place, from an environment? That is influenced by your Caucasian husband. How can you fight patriarch and sleep with patriarch, the white patriarch specifically? Right. Like that's my whole thing. It's like they go in there and talk about ripping and tearing down white supremacy, and then at the end of the night go they go and sleep. You understand exactly. me? With, with those who benefit from the very privilege and foundation of white supremacy. Yeah. So for me, it's too hypocritical for me to see anything from it but a circus show. That's the word I'm looking for, hypocritical. And um, I'm finna get, we gonna get into it some more dangerous talk right quick. Hypocritical, right? So I've been seeing a lot of people talk about polygamy mm. lately. A lot of people, like <laughs> no, I- No, that, that subject, the subject keep coming up. Like I keep hearing the subject polygamy, right? And a lot of people are on the internet are against it, surprisingly. I don't get it because like, Everybody I know have been cheated on and went back to the same person. So basically you was in a polygamy relationship. But they down it, but they turn around, these same people will turn around and accept gay marriage. Mm -hmm. What's your take on that? How you feel about that whole situation? <laughs> Yeah, I need I need the 19 Keys high level talk because I ain't gonna articulate it and kick it like how you finna kick it, man. I mean, you know, so first of all, you gotta look at the gay marriage. How did people accept gay marriage? Gay marriage was not accepted because the overwhelming society decided to say that this is something that we agree with, this is something that society should move forward with and evolve in our construct of thought. Gay marriage was shot down every proposal that when it went to vote by the people. Every single time, gay marriage was shot down. It never was voted yeah. and ran through. After it was shot down by the people. So the people didn't get to decide, it went to Supreme Court. The Supreme Court justices decided that they wanted to rule in favor of gay marriage, right? Yeah. After that happened, the people being influenced by the powers that be in this authoritarian society took place in an experiment. This experiment happened on Facebook, where it was, it was so-called the Facebook first experiment that they ran and uh, on people, right? Where they had a rainbow AV, right? Right afterward, everybody was changing their avatar to this rainbow picture over their icon, over their profile picture. Yeah, and then you. later on, Facebook came out and said that, yeah, this was uh, an experiment. We wanted to see how people were going to interact with it. And then you had the slogans, love wins, right? Yeah. So now all women all across the Hello. world. You, you skipped the part. Your boy Obama. Oh, yeah, he, Obama. He, he, he said, yeah, no, you know, yeah. Obama was he the one who did it. They yeah. called him the first gay president, right? <laughs> that was what they called him. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, gay marriage is not something that society evolved into it was something that society was forced into number one yeah. and then later on society is a crowd mind you understand you see one person monkey see monkey do 
right? You see one person do it, then you want to do it, then you do it. And now you don't want to be seen as unempathetic, so now you join in on the crowd and you go with where the crowd is going. So the crowd mind swept over. Social media has this power where it was able to basically control minds and, and, and control the masses of the people. You understand me? And so uh, 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 never mind what your opinion was, but now you're going with the propaganda. Yeah. The propaganda doesn't get down to what your core ethical thoughts are on this subject, right? The propaganda is manipulating you, forcing you, right, to accept aspects of a campaign which largely makes you accept everything else that comes along with it. So then everybody starts saying, well, love wins. They can never articulate why they believed or why they was against it, to be honest. You understand me? But all of a sudden, love win had just became the slogan. Right. So it became a, a paradigm shift where everybody just started utilizing this language that was given to them. Right? So, you know, the LGBT community had its end to start growing, which is LGBT community is a corporation. They have a president. Mm -hmm. You understand me? They have a set of bylaws, agendas that they have, and they find themselves infiltrating every aspect of institutions for power and control. That's mm -hmm. what they do, that's what they have, right? So, like I said, it wasn't no unicorn moment where everybody just woke up and one day was like, this is the most magical thing we need to do. It was because we live in a society that controls the people <laughs> and the people in power decided that this is what we want to do, right? And now y'all go follow this as if it was your idea. And now today we see people celebrating and supporting it and embracing it and they don't even remember what they felt about it at first or why they did. Exactly. Right? So, you know, that's just an interesting idea, number one. But so you got people that now support a new construct of man being with man, a woman, woman being with woman. Man, man it's who even, are women look, being with a man that was a it's woman. It's even so it's even legal for the kids to be because to um change their gender and shit now you know like that's crazy to me you mean it's legal for them to do it yeah kids you, you said illegal no i say it's legal for them yeah that's crazy like, for the kids like your kids and, people support to and they support it but they make polygamy seem like so disgusting yeah now in the context if you compare those same two thought processes because at the end of the day, if you utilize the same slogan of propaganda that they use to justify gay marriage, that yeah. same context can fit with polygamy, right? But we live in a Western society, so polygamy doesn't fit in the minds of the people yeah. because the construct was never given to the people. Now, if the Supreme Court decided to make polygamy legal, because that's where real the crux of this conversation goes into in the comparison is that one is legal and one is illegal. Right. If a man wants to be in a heterosexual relationship with multiple women and have them married under the same name, structure, title, trust, yeah. he can't do that. That is illegal to practice polygamy. But if that same man wants to go marry another man, he can do that. Yeah. You understand me? So how does the law favor, you understand me, polygamy uh, or favor gay marriage, but not polygamy? Not polygamy. Right. When polygamy was something that was lobbied for. You understand me? It, it, it was something that was forced onto the people, and then they accepted it. So at the end of the day, I don't believe it's not something that people don't, like a lot of men would practice it if they could. Um, and, and this is not even giving my take on neither one of these things as good as yeah. bad. This is just true assessment. If it became legal, a lot of people would accept it yeah. or be open to understanding it, you understand me, and, yeah. and seeing what the ramifications, good or bad, would be. The thing is, people are so controlled by their state. They, they're so controlled by the idea of when something becomes illegal is bad or something becomes legal is good, that they don't know how to think for themselves. Yeah. You understand me? So most people don't know what they feel, don't know what they think because they are only given the controls, right? Yeah. The social construct. They're only given the Western thoughts and philosophies. They can't think beyond the boxes and the ideas. So most people don't know what they really think because you can't think beyond the world you grew up in. So for me, I'm always trying to think, fuck the box. The box don't exist. Yeah. I want to think like, how, how would I look at this if I wasn't born with the limitation of my experience? Because your experience is a limitation. Yeah. You understand me? Because you was only given a box. It's like, okay, faith, religion, programming, language, parents, social status, class, neighborhood, you understand me, education, this is your box. 
right? Right. This is what's going to mold you. Then you grow up, and then you got to break out of that to see the world outside of your box. So you have to get educated and experiences and be around people of different walks of life. And, and, and then that allows you to break outside the modes that you were given in those conflicts. Yeah. And then it changes. But if you happen to be one of those persons that evolved past those boxes, people who still are in them can't agree with you, accept your thought process, or begin to understand it. Matter of fact, they're going to fight 100% against it. So mm -hmm. I see why it offends people because they can only think in their box. Yeah. I don't think it should even be that big of a... I don't think it should be that hard of a concept to understand for nobody because, like, if you ever studied anything on masculine and feminine energy, then you know, like, different women bring out different energy in men mm -hmm. and vice versa. Different men bring out different energy in women. So with that being, like, that's like the, the law of the universe or whatnot, it, you know? It, but to this point, though, it's like, if a man has sex with a woman, yeah, and he ejaculates his sperm in that woman, that woman is gonna take on the DNA of that man. She's gonna take on, you know, traits of that man, information yeah. that is within him, right? The vice versa effect is not the same, right? For the man taking on her DNA, now he's gonna yeah. take on that spiritual DNA because he's yeah. connected to her, right? At that point emotions, energies, and things of that nature yeah. can latch on to yours, right? Good or bad. But that woman, it's the same way if a woman has multiple partners while she's pregnant, the child can take on DNA from multiple partners, yeah. right? So a woman's body was never meant to take on multiple partners. You understand me? Number one, that's not safe for the child. It's not safe for her body and her energy. It can drive a woman crazy, the fact that she's getting ejaculated with this sperm, and then it's changing who she is. She's thinking like him. She's thinking of him. She still feels that person inside her because that person is. You understand mm -hmm. me? They, they, their DNA and their information is. So right. on a biological level, if we think about <clears throat> what are our social constructs that we create based on nature, then we will design it based on our biology and our structure, right? And then we will find the best ways to live and, and co coexist with each other based on those laws. And then that starts to decide what the norms are. So when a man be like, well, you know, a woman being with multiple men is not the same as a man being with multiple women. There's scientific fact that can back that up. You understand Maybe. me? And then at the same time, but now I think they, I think they already know that because it's like, if like where I'm coming from, like it being in the streets and whatnot, everybody know like when you cheat on your significant partner, people who I know have cheated, when women cheat and go and mess with another man, they do it emotionally. No, that's a fact. Men do it. He was just, he was just trying to go on here, and get it, get one right. off, and come back home. Men are not emotional cheaters. Nah, not at all. Men often cheat for convenience, <clears throat> proximity. You understand me? Uh, and then the idea that men don't believe that they're cheating at the same time because men never truly context it as cheating because men believe that it's a part of their nature to be out in conquest and conquer. You understand me? And to explore. It's a part of your freedom. It's a part of your natural rights as a man to be able to do what you want to. That's how you feel as a man. So a lot of men feel like it's cheating to be monogamous rather than it's cheating to just be. Right? right? Because it's like, Cheating is like really going against the rules that you set for yourself, yeah. right? Hold on, man. Let me just I say like this. We should change the word with even cheating. I'm just gonna say that. Let me, because I, I, I ain't trying to co-sign cheating. I'm just giving you all of it. Like, habits. what's the word? What the hell do cheating mean in the first place? Like, you know, we get a test, we cheat because, right? We had the answers already. But yeah. how does cheating make sense in the context of a broken <laughs> agreement? <laughs> Um, because I guess you um, you told her that you was gonna be there for her and only her, and you wouldn't have did it with somebody else. So but, but the word cheat. cheating though, is there a better word for it though? You know what I'm saying? The word cheating just I just don't feel like it sums up what's mm -hmm. going on in that. I think it, it kind of cheapens the reality and it, it diminishes, you know what I mean, perspective and context. So to change the word. What word do you think it should be? <laughs> See, we already programmed with the Jeep word and that. Yeah, I mean, but that's why you got to find something that just <laughs> gotta, makes sense. Though. Something that makes sense. Yeah, right? like, what did you actually yeah, do? Unfaithful. <laughs> Unloyal. 
you know? I guess them be the right fitting words for it. You know, you're unfaithful, I guess. That's the perfect word. You know, stick with that. But there's just so much going on in the world. Too much to comprise into one episode. Mm. You know? We're going to get back to that one now. Yeah. One. Finding a new word for cheating. Yeah. You understand me? Because I think a one size fits all word. It's just Because what happens is it's programmed with so much emotion that yeah. when you hear it, you think that that person has done everything that you ever have programmed into that word. And they didn't. Context is different. And, feelings, and, situations. The and whole cheating line. is not always bad. Explain what you mean. And I'm not even talking about, see? When I just said that, he instantly thought of a relationship. <laughs> what could we talk about relationship? Yeah, but the word cheating, right? We talking about the relationship right now, but when you think of the word cheating, I, sometimes you might have to cheat in life to get ahead in life. You know what I'm saying? Not even just on a relationship. Man, you got to give an example to the people. For an example, right? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> All right, for an example, man, like in society, black people, I'm gonna go to black men in the, in, the, in society, right? We blocked out of corporate America, bro. The way they designed it, they want they put us in high risk communities and high risk situations, and sometimes we might have to hustle to get ahead in life. And once you get ahead, the people who actually make it without getting caught, they turn their life around. They go get business, start and bow a lot gracefully, take care of their family. They cheated though, you know what I'm saying? Because they kind of jumped over a loop, got quick money real fast, and got out of the matrix, you know. Basically, that's what I'm saying. Like, cheating ain't necessarily got to be a bad thing because sometimes it can help you get ahead in life. That's my analogy on it. When I hear the word cheating, but, you know, like, a lot yeah, of... we need a better word. We I need a like better, word. yeah, that word like cheating. I don't like the word. Yeah. Context. Because it's so Cause, much yeah, moral so context much you get, that yeah. go into that because the system should have never been created and designed and like that in the first place. You understand Shit, me? the system so is cheating. The question <laughs> is, is that... If, so here's, here's a, a philosophical question. Yeah. Or when when you do something that you want to do, even if you had an agreement with somebody else, you understand me? But the simple fact that you wanted to do it and you did it, is that, are you cheating yourself by making the agreement first, you understand me? Um, and then... By consistent being consistent with the agreement, you cheating yourself, right? But only when you break the agreement is when you cheat somebody else, right? Because at the beginning of the agreement, there has to be known the strength of the discipline to hold on to it or the will to even want to make this type of agreement. But knowing that it's consistent with reality and society, of course, you know that that's what's deemed to be normal. Well... All that goes back to never make a promise that you can't keep. I feel like... But then men wait, wait. Based on wait, wait a second, though. It goes back to know thyself. Everybody, you should know how you operate. We grown now. You should, you know, so you, you know, like, I can't let you know certain obligations you can't live up to, man. You know your limit. People should know their limitations. Man don't cheat on emotion, but different women bring out different energy. So... Depending on, you know, the, the vicinity or, you know what I'm saying, where you might meet a woman that just brings something out of you that you ain't like, dang, I ain't even know. She's a little tiger over there. <laughs> she just brought it out, you know. Would it be smarter to allow a level of freedom that doesn't feel like cheating so it doesn't, because the idea of the forbidden fruit makes people want to taste it. You know right. what I'm saying? But when a person feel like they got the freedom, they oftentimes not go use it. You feel me? And right. I think sometimes it's the context that there are the barriers that make a person want to step over, especially for a man, because a man wants to feel like I do what I want to do. Yeah. So it's like, and, and that's not to say like, yo, let's make an agreement, do whatever you want to do, but it's just saying that I'm not on your back about things of yeah. that nature, but make right decisions, you know what I mean, for me and make sure that nothing is going on that, that should be going on, you understand me, in certain contexts. I feel like if you're going to make an agreement to be in a relationship with a woman, right, you got to live up to all the standards of what being faithful to your woman means Absolutely. in the first place. Now, if you 
go pick a harlot. The pick, you knew this girl was a harlot before you even got into the relationship with her. You know this shit ain't finna work out. You know what I'm saying? You don't know what a harlot is. That was the old English. <laughs> <show. laughs> yeah, I just ain't want to say the word, man. You know what I'm saying? I, 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 you know what I'm saying? A harlot? <laughs> How old is he <laughs> looking at? <laughs> but nah, real talk though, but like, like, like for men, especially married man, if you, if you marry, once you marry this girl, your woman, your wife, or whatever you want to call her, you got to honor your vow, your, your, um, what they, what they call it, cause, yeah. yeah, the vows, you got to honor that shit, man, you know, just, just rules in your heart, period, you got to honor that, but, if you just in a little relationship and y'all don't even got a five year goal or a ten year goal, y'all ain't got a vision of what y'all really doing, y'all just really playing house and all that, you can expect some, some shit agree. like that to happen. You know, you gotta it's expect it. Because I believe, you know, context was that all of this is really about marriage. Right? Yeah. Because you can only truly have an agreement with someone that you married to. Right? And if the expectation is to go to marriage, then you either have to be ready or preparing yourself yeah. for that point. You understand me? Where you agree to whatever the context in your situation, your relationship is. Because nowadays people got all kind of crazy relationships. Yeah, they call it they call it situationship. Nah. But just the idea that like women sexualize themselves now. How long? They sexualize themselves, right? And then when they get in a relationship, they get mad when the man cheat on them. But the whole time, like. How can you trust women that sexualize themselves in front of the whole world? Could, would you be able to, like, you know, like, for an example, these Instagram models that's on a half naked, how can you fully, would you be able to fully trust one 100% being in a relationship? Nah, because I don't want her to consistently um, advertise, advertise herself, yeah. specifically because I know what that comes with, right? It's like we talked about on the last time. For women getting fifty DMs a day, she got to be advertising herself. You know yeah. what type? That's 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 tough marketing to get fifty DMs a day. She got to yeah. be putting out something that he's <laughs> thirsty for. It's a lot of women she on really. Instagram. But at the end of the day, it's like, you know, the the quality of sacredness has disappeared, and women have pimped themselves out for profit. You know what I'm yeah. saying? They decided that this sacredness and upholding their bodies. And, and, and looking at it as holy temples, you understand me, ain't worth it. They'd rather get dollars and exposure. I was just going to say, they, they, and they justify it. Well, I'm just getting money. This is my job. And sometimes you ain't got to, you know what I'm saying, you ain't got to disrespect yourself to get no yeah, money. I mean, at the end of the right. day, it ain't worth it. You understand me? That's just the way I see it, man. I, I, don't, I don't like the idea, especially when people lie and talk about, you know, it got to do with sexual freedom. Yeah. Sexual liberation and freedom has nothing to do with you putting on a social media platform for attention. Yeah. If you want to say that you're capitalizing on your body because you decided that, you know, you don't want to develop any other talents besides selling yourself, then say that. You understand me? Like, but you got to be 100% with that. Yeah. Right? Like, say, like, women literally go get ass shots and go get their titties done so that they can go accentuate themselves in front of men and get paid. That's yeah. what they doing it for. Right exactly. at the end of the day, because niggas is the one who paying for that after they pay for it. You feel me? Like that's how the game goes. So it's like there has to be a level of sacredness that is reintroduced to our women, because our women, of course, have been dogged, exploited, mistreated, abused. Yeah. You understand me? Uh, disrespected. Everything you could think of, and now. They're doing it to themselves in the name of capitalism. And then we can take this back to the word cheating. That's why those women get cheated on because of the, in the same instance, you will see a girl out here exploiting herself. She in a relationship, got a man. But that man, he going to see a woman that got that just walk in the room with grace and elegance. and You know what I'm saying? He going to be like, man, I ain't never had a woman talk to me on an intellectual level. She just brought out another energy in me that I ain't even know I had in me because I done been around this low vibration for so long, you know? Well, I, you know, I ain't gonna say that's just why women get cheated on. Man. I'm just saying, but that's a that's open the door. That's a, I it mean, definitely you know, open the door for That's a, that's a, a, a aspect that if a man came to you specifically <laughs> because he was lusting you for your body, then of course, then he's gonna specifically like another woman and, and particularly lust her just for her body as well, right? It's like at the end of the day, if it required more depth, 
right? Yeah. To be with you, it, it's gonna require more depth, right? For a person to cheat on you. You understand me? Yeah. So it's like that connection gotta be deeper than the shallow existence of, you understand me, your looks. And, and, and then more so it's like being, <clears throat> the, the social media thing I think is just, is, is just terrible. Yeah. Right, because we got more options in that. Like I'm somebody that actually teaches and educate people on their different options and skill sets. But it's like the laziest one is gonna sell in your body. That's no talent in that. Yeah. But people find quick routes to go get paid, so they pimp themselves. Right, it's been happening for a long time. But you know, I grew up in a Muslim household, and at the end of the day, you know, I see everything on social media too, man. I got I got two eyes. You understand me? And they work very good. You feel me? And Instagram is going to show you. The algorithm is going to present more things to try to keep you to stay on there. Yeah. Uh, and women want attention. Men want attention. Men go show their shiny things. Women go show they, 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 they big ass. Yeah. You understand me? Literally, I, I think about this fact that women turn around in the picture and show their ass as their most valuable part of themselves. Yeah. Not their mind, personality, their skills, their talents, their hobbies. Yeah. You literally... They go get a whole procedure to go get an ass and then turn around and in every picture they have to show you their ass because they feel like you won't see the value Listen, in them because they Because they know like the, the last picture got 100,000 likes. I know. They're going to keep doing it. And that's niggas and women fault because women hey. be liking it and men be liking hey. it. You understand me? Men be paying for it, but then you get to the whole conversation of you want somebody to treat you right. Then you got to have somebody that doesn't come to you for your body because ain't nobody that got with you for your body go treat you better than nobody you get that <laughs> man <you're> saying? listen <laughs> you know what nah, i'm saying he like is, he gonna treat you like it like you know what i'm saying yeah, nobody like, like, like nobody yeah you know what i'm saying or treat you like anybody you know what I'm saying? But, because at the end of the day, he got like, with you for your man money. Who, um, who just it's like act. a woman, a woman getting with you for your money, don't expect her to treat you other than if you go broke. Exactly. That's what it is. Or she get used to your money, she gonna find somebody else that got more character than you. Hey, listen, it's crazy that you said that. I was on um, Facebook a couple weeks ago, and I seen a girl make a step. She say, if I'm dating a man and he fumbled a bag, I'm gone the next day. I say, dang, yeah, sister. Yeah, I wouldn't even touch a woman like that. Yeah, I say, I say, so you mean tell me if he had, when he had the bag, you was with him. He was rocking out with him. He long as he taking you out on trips or going to the club. But as soon as he lost it, you ain't even, a thought ain't crossed your mind. Like, well, let me help my man generate a new bag. You just instantly left the next day. Nah, that, them type of women. But those are type of cats, honestly, they put themselves in that predicament because they live by their dollar. Yeah. Because, you know, I don't feel sorry for them because at the end of the day, they bought her. Yeah. And then at a certain point, they couldn't afford her no more. You understand me? But they knew she was bought and paid for the whole time that they was with her yeah. because they had a whole maintenance bill. You understand me? That's what they signed up for. That's what they yeah. got. So, you know, but them are if, if that's them, what you go do. Them, them, the relations, them the type of relationships that get glorified the most on social media. Yeah, fake and it's, and it's dangerous because... We're gonna take it back to there the kids. There is only one type of relationship that should truly be glorified. Yeah. And that's a family. A family. All that a, other a crap. Black mean family nothing. At that. A black family. Like a healthy family structure. Right? And, and, mm -hmm. and you know, glorified is, is one thing, but just the fact that we don't have enough healthy black families yeah. in our society, that's key. Right? I so really can't like, even that think, that of, think of one it. off the top of my head, like right now for this generation. You talking about like a young one? Yeah, like yeah, like one that you know what I'm saying, a modern day family, like black family. With Jay Z and Beyonce. With Jay Z and Beyonce. They like but the, we don't really know too much they about like the that. first family. Like we don't really know too I mean, much you know, about that. The kids seem healthy family. and stuff. You know. You know what I'm saying? Seem like, you know, the elevator incidents and things of that nature behind <laughs> it. I thought it was Will and Judd and them until the, the kids got old and I watched Red Table Talk. <laughs> For real, so it's like hard, man. It ain't, it ain't that many, man. Mm -hmm. Like for real. Man, I thought it was <clears throat> um uh uh what's <laughs> the Adams family looking good. It, 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 it. Ah. <laughs> nah, for real though, man. Uh, <laughs> In, in all seriousness, <laughs> the Adams family. I said the Adams family. They had on our black. It was a joke. Dish. In all seriousness, man, <laughs> the most important thing we can do right now is family. 
Yeah. There's no nothing more important than that. You know what I'm saying? It's like all this other stuff is like you trying to get to understand that. And you just got to ask yourself. And most people don't care. So, like, you got to put yourself in a category. Like, I wish we had a world that was more transparent. So when you're doing certain stuff, you're saying, well, listen, I don't want a family. So I'm not doing anything that benefits or goes towards that culture whatsoever. Mm. Right? So, therefore, and, and, and this is important because also a lot of people shouldn't have children. Right, a lot of people shouldn't have children if they don't want a family. Yeah, I, I don't. I ain't talking about you want a child. Do you want a family? You understand me? Because you robbing that child of the the natural experience of having parents. Yeah. Right, and we live in a world that doesn't even celebrate that no more. Even though they say now it's more two parent households that are coming up than later points in time. You understand me? It was on the decline and now it's on the uprise. Right. Yeah. And I believe that's economically it's beneficial for these people to be together, right? So I think we may see a, a rise in that. But if we don't, as a black culture, create family, we don't have a future. There's no wealth to be passed down without a family, right? Everybody talk about these high level men. That shit only matters is that them men want to be in their children's lives and raise yeah. them the right way. Cause your money don't raise a child. You understand me? The yeah. knowledge, the time yeah. that you put in. You understand me? That that role that you play as a father and as a mother go raise their child. And what we see in society now is a lot of men and women that can never be qualified to be fathers and mothers. Yeah. That's true. That's true indeed. For real. Like, I, I really can't even combat on that. He hit it right on the tee. And, and one one thing I can add though is you absolutely right about family being together because co-parenting is the like one of like the hardest things to do in well, life I right now. Bro. You just you just went in stress stress mode. You swear. Oh my god! Man, it's like I'm shutting down. It's like, <laughs> but there's look and it goes back to leadership. I seen it. It goes back to leadership and submission. When you got a co-parent, when you co-parent. You really like, have to tap into your submission aspect and stuff, you know what I'm saying? Just to keep the peace for the child, you know? But it gets stressful at times. Man, put know? a put a B roll up there with like a black dude, like Oh my Whoa. god. <laughs> Matter of fact, give me I wish I had a baby shoe, I would have just squizzed it, like, why? <laughs> But no, nah, it's all good though, man. Like me and my me and my child mother is we we actually cool now. You know, we actually grew. You know look, if if I can give <clears> any <throat> advice, ladies. Choose a man that's not just good for you, right? Yeah. But that you can see being a great father. Yeah. Fellas, don't just choose a woman that look good because, you know what I mean, she thick and she can take nice pictures. Choose a woman because you believe that she'd be a great mother to your child. Yeah. Every time y'all go sit down or lay down and have sex, you enter in agreement that there's a possibility that we can have a child. Yeah. You understand me? That child is going to be a responsibility for both of y'all. It may feel good now in the moment, right? But later on, when you're dealing with the stress and the conflict and the disorder and the emotions, you're going to wish that you had thought a little more about the decisions that you're making. You understand me? For that fleeting moment of lust and sex, right? So let's stop choosing each other because we look good or we got money. Right, and it's momentary, but sex itself is a contractual agreement that there's a possibility that we can have a child. You understand me? So every time you have sex with a person, it's a physical contract saying that we may have a child together. Yeah. Right? Whether you're putting on a condom, whether it slips, whatever it may happen. So <clears throat> think about that next time. Is this person that I'm about to have sex with, right? Would they be a good father? Or a good mother, and if the answer is no, you should rethink your decisions until you get an answer that's yes. Yeah. I'm 19 keys. She's just man to man. Uh, who, who told him that he can, you know what I'm saying, do the clothes <laughs> out on my show? <laughs> I had to get him back one time, man. But now, nah, man, if we're gonna wrap it up on the man to man podcast, man, like I said, it was a blessing to have my bro. You know, yeah. sit down and have a conversation with me. And I want everybody to go check out his um, Apple page. Can you tell him where to go to, uh, you know, check out your other podcast? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, subscribe to Podcast 19 Keys. Uh, make sure y'all subscribe to the YouTube channel. 
Um, like, share, you understand me, with 10 people. Put this in their life. You know it's some. Listen, you know it's somebody who need this game and this conversation. Yeah. And your partner right now, you know, phone this girl, you about to go over there. You understand me? Next thing you know, kind of slip off. You get her pregnant. He hitting you up, man. She got the pregnancy test. What should I do? She not gonna get no abortion, nothing like that. Next thing you know, no, he broke. His financial situation don't look like it look on the ground. You understand me? <laughs> and, and then all of a sudden, you understand me? He can't go out. It can't even be a partner no more because he can't afford to. Can't go out to the places. None of that. All that gotta go to the baby now, right? So number one, you ain't even got no partner right now. You used to have a partner. You understand me? But you can send him over here. And we're going to talk to him man to man. You yeah. feel me? And after that, he might change his decisions, move with some wisdom, you understand me, and give his attention to things that's aligned with his divine masculine intentions. I'm 19 Keys, and I just closed it out twice. <laughs> <laughs> Peace, family. Tap in next week. But I should be back next week, man. He was just under the influence this week. No, I'm just kidding. But he'll be back, though, man. Bro, bro was under the weather. We all still tied in, one band, one sound. I'm your host, Steve Jones, my brother, 19 Keys, and we out. So we get to this point in the conversation where we understand context. I hate paradigm words. Paradigm words are what I consider words that we use without really thinking about them, right? And they become sheer words that everybody includes in a lexicon without actually giving a breakdown if it really makes sense to you and the relationship that you have with the word in the context of how it used and how it socially describes the action or not, right? So when it comes to cheating, I got to the thought of further thinking that in the description, cheating for me is like, you know, performance enhancement in a race, right? Where you're giving yourself an unfair advantage, right? Uh, but you are still participating in a race where everybody's agreed to the same rules, right? And that they're all fighting for the same prize and the same award. You understand me? So in that context, anybody that gives themselves an unfair advantage when they agree to something and then they still get the benefit of it, but they didn't actually follow those rules, then that's cheating. So in the context of cheating in a relationship, right? Imagine the idea of when a person is single, they get to see whoever they want to see. They get to be who, be with whoever they want to be. You understand me? Now, two people come together and say that, well, we're not going to be able to do those same things anymore, right? Our contract with each other is saying that, listen, you can get the benefit of being in a relationship, but you can no longer move and act as if you're single. You understand me? And so if one person decides to go cheat outside of that uh, or do something outside of that agreement, um, and they still get the benefits, right, of that agreement, then they're cheating because they're giving themselves an unfair advantage. This person is still living the single life but getting the benefits of the relationship. And then that it would be my agreement on cheating. And then context matters because the moment we start describing and understanding exactly what we agree to when we utilize language, you understand me? We no longer go languish, right? in the preconceived ideas that have fitted in there, we describe things for what they mean for ourselves. And then it changes the complete contract that we have when we start to do things. So next time, when you consider something cheating, now you have a definition, now you have an idea and a standard to live to and to live by. You understand me? So, yeah, you know, at the end of the day, that unfair advantage and with those benefits, don't agree to it if you can't do it. So in conclusion, I believe that the act of discipline strengthens you to gain power that you couldn't even describe. You understand me? By putting in control all your animal instincts, you understand me? Um, so that you can um, receive the benefits, right, of having self-control and having power over self. We live in a society that no longer celebrates that sort of action, so it's easy to be guided outside of that. But at the end of the day, you have today, this moment right now, to make a decision on what type of person that you wanna be going for. I don't care what you did yesterday, right? Day before yesterday or last week. The question is who you wanna be moving forward. You understand me? 
And, and, and in reality, the only person you can ever truly cheat is yourself. You understand me? And that is with the bond and the decisions and the agreements that you have with yourself. You understand me? So I appreciate y'all locking in, man. It's just a conversation, man. Oh, man. Somebody had to have it with you. Welcome to the Man to Man podcast where we talk like God. Man to man. man, to man. A little swimmer's not working, not feeling like a man. Testosterone not pumping, stamina in the gym ain't going hard enough. Not exerting maximum effort and energy and endurance when you inside there. Recovery time taking too long. Not feeling like your immune system is strong. Energy is not overreacting. Brain doesn't feel stimulated throughout the day. Well, if you have any of those problems, it's okay. You come over here and you try the sports moss. It's especially formulated with all natural ingredients such as sea moss, zinc, elderberry, vitamin D, and cordyceps, which is a very powerful mushroom fungus that allows you to be able to tap in to self. If you want to do your own research, please do, but I've done a ton of research and I can tell you it works. There's magic in these pills right here, but more than that, there's nature in these pills. And once you tap back into your nature, you tap back into that manhood. Peace, family. Get on the sports moss.